Oke, okay. selamat. Selamat datang tentunya dalam acara Study in Holland Online Series bersama saya Molly pada sore hari ini sebelum menjelang buka puasa. Sebelum Molly uh, switch into English ya dan sebelum nanti kita berkenalan juga dengan uh, Nufik Mesir Indonesia dan juga dengan para guest speakers, apakah sudah melihat uh, kamera Molly dengan jelas dan juga mendengar suara Molly dengan jelas? Apabila sudah mungkin mohon bantuannya untuk tulis di kolom chat. There you go. Thank you so much. Oke. Okay. So once again welcome to study in online study in Holland online series di rumah aja ya. Um, now on a, a Wednesday 20 of April we are going to have a very special session from Breda University. So the topic from uh, for today is study master tourism destination management in the Netherlands. Um, good afternoon. My name is Molly, and later on we are going to introduce all the guest speakers that are really special for today. But before that. We are going uh, to um, get to know more with um, Nufik Mesa Indonesia. So hopefully you can see my screen at the moment. There you go. Yes. Okay, first of all, Nufik Mesa Indonesia. You might have known uh, about Nufik Mesa Indonesia. Mesa is, um, stands for Netherlands Education Support Office. We are not only uh, to give the information regarding study in Holland, but also we facilitate ML knowledge because through this activity, we collaborate and do a lot of things between Indonesia and the Netherlands, between institution for sure. And then we support internationalization of education. So this is one of the way we try to uh, introduce you about study in Holland. Not only about this event, not only with this event, but uh, we also uh, do the education fair. Uh, so we can wait uh, for the Dutch higher education institution. Hopefully in the upcoming years, we can do travel and then we can see each other. And also we can meet all the prospective students here in Indonesia. Um, we also manage scholarship programs. Uh, maybe you might know uh, about Stunet, Orange Knowledge Program, and also Orange, Orange Slip Scholarship, and also you share uh, for those who wants to still want to have a scholarship. Uh, you can uh, apply for Orange Slip Scholarship because there are still few deadlines. So once again, if you want to study in Holland with the scholarship, come to uh, the link bit.ly slash Indonesia OTS. And then we invite uh, Dutch students to come to Indonesia to study through the WheelWay program. So this is the way we support outgoing mobility in Indonesia. The last one, we connect and support the Netherlands alumni network. Okay, so if you have finished your study, if you have graduated from your uni, we still connect each other. We still uh, facilitate to network each other. Uh, through the NL Alumni Career Fair, Orange Talk, Workshop, and any kind of discussion. Uh, especially for this week, we have plenty of, uh, what is it, like talk show. Maybe you can check our Instagram feed because we have Orange Talk 8. So I think if you are keen or interested with that kind of stuff, you can check and also access bit.ly slash Orange Talk 8. And then if you would like to get to uh, what is it like to do the consultation, of course, we have online consultation and then you can write this down, all the information of our contact details. We have website, emails, and also uh, our social media account. And this is a special one. Uh, if you would like to have uh, the online counseling, please access bit.ly slash OC uh, because our student counselor are ready to serve you. And then if you have any questions, just go for it because we are available from Monday till Thursday. So Monday and Tuesday from 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. And then Wednesday and Thursday from 10 p.m. until, sorry, from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. So basically we cover not only the afternoon session, but also the morning session. Another one, if you uh, would like to download our digital brochure, please access a bit.ly slash dbnufikneso because uh, from this brochure, you can get the information about study in the Netherlands, not only the journal information, but also the scholarship information. The last one, all the frequently answered questions, come and access bit.ly slash FAQ and NESO because the questions that you always um, ask to us, we always update through this platform. And then there you go. So today, once again, welcome to the online learning study master tourism destination management in the Netherlands. 
I'm going to introduce the guest speaker for today because once again, this session and collaboration with Breda University of Applied Science. So I am going to introduce the lovely uh, Breda University of Applied Sciences, um, Madeleine Nguyen as the representative. Hello, hello Madeleine, how are you? And then- I'm good, thank you. Uh, there you go. And then the second one, we have Ineka Van Killen. So Ineka is the operational manager or coordinator of the Master Tourism Destination Management. Hi, Ineka. Hi, thank you for having us. <laughs> Greetings from Indonesia and now you are in Breda, right? Yes, true. We are at the university together with my colleague. Yes, we have Lisa. Hello, Lisa Van Duan. And then you are the Master Super Support uh, for the Master Tourism Destination Management. Am I correct? Yes, correct. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and then we have uh, Luki atau Mbak Luki Hertia Rasani. Ini merupakan alumni. So she's the alumni from Breda University of Applied Sciences in 2019. Hi, Mbak Luki. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you for having me, Molly. Salam kenal juga buat Mbak Luki. And then we have Bruce Hancock and then we connect from Australia. There we go. Hi, Bruce. So Bruce is the one of the representative of, sorry, uh, Bruce is the one, um, what is it like, the representative of uh, uh, Asia and also Australia. Am I correct? There you yes, go. Yes, you're correct. Um, okay. Um, I, I lived there for a long time, but now I'm back in Australia and I'm doing Australia and Asia. There you go. So thank you so much for joining us at this session. Uh, I'm so happy to be here as well because again, uh, this study program, it's uh, in my opinion, it's very good because again, uh, tourism, it's still it's the number one, uh, I would say industry because everyone loves to travel, right? Okay, so without further ado, I I think uh, this is time for um, Madeline Nguyen to give the presentation uh, for the first time. So Madeline, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for your kind introduction. Um, I will now start sharing my screen. This is the presentation that we will uh, all use. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the presentation about tourism destination management. Uh, before I give the word uh, to my colleagues specifically about this program, I will very briefly introduce to you our institute. Um, so this is um, our name, our logo. Um, okay, this is uh, all of us. So Molly already introduced uh, us. Uh, so we will all do a short part in this presentation. We have international students from all around the world. At the moment, we have 69 different student nationalities, uh, including students from Indonesia and uh, more than 21%, almost 25 actually at the moment of our students is international, especially in the masters. So if you come to study with us, uh, you will be in a very international classroom. We are not only nationally, but also internationally recognized. We are, for example, in the Shanghai ranking. We are the first in the field of hospita hospitality and tourism management in the Netherlands. And in the QS ranking, we are number 23 in that field. Why should you come and study at Vivas? Well, I already mentioned that we have a very international environment, both among students and also lecturers. So as you saw, Bruce, uh, all the way from Australia, we have uh, teachers from all around the world. We focus on quality over quantity, always. We are a rather small university of applied sciences. We have around 7,000 students in total. And we do not, do not have the ambition to grow in total numbers, but uh, we want to continuously grow in terms of quality. So when you come to study with us, uh, you will experience that we have rather small classrooms. Uh, the teachers are very approachable. Uh, you can ask them all kinds of questions. You can call the teachers by the first name. So there is not a lot of hierarchy. Um, there's a very personal approach and connection. So if you run into any issues, not only with your studies, but anything else, uh, there's always people to help you. Furthermore, we have connection, connections with and international work placements at uh, big companies in the field where you study in, for example, with Hilton Hotel Group, Disneyland, Google, and many more. And you can also develop your CV during your studies. You can even start your own company, and this can be your graduation project. 
Also, we have a very, very beautiful uh, green campus uh, close to the city center of Breda. Uh, you can see the, a picture of our campus in my background. Um, and we pay a lot of attention to students' well being. Uh, you can imagine that it was uh, quite tough times uh, with COVID, uh, where sometimes we had to close uh, the campus. Students had to study from home, but there, was always, there were always mentors there for students who want to still uh, meet up either online and when it was possible again, even face to face on campus. Today, we are talking about tourism destination management, but in total, we have nine different domains of expertise. And just in case you are also interested in something else, I would just like to mention them. Uh, our nine domains are data science and artificial intelligence. This is our newest domain. Also games, logistics, built environment, hotel, media, facility, leisure and events, and of course, tourism. We have bachelor's programs in all of these and master's in most of them. So should you have uh, any other interests, then please uh, check our website for more information. This is just a brief overview of all our master's programs. Um, in the field of tourism, apart from tourism destination management, we also have a master of science, uh, leisure and tourism studies. Then uh, where are we? Well, the name of our institute already uh, gives away the city where we are, and that is the city of Breda in the south of the Netherlands. Uh, in the picture here, you can see the harbor. Like a lot of Dutch cities, uh, Breda is uh, surrounded by water. And Breda is in the south, very close to Belgium. It's only 15 minute drive by car, but it's only half an hour away from Rotterdam by train and only one hour uh, from Amsterdam. And it is very easy to go to other cities, not only in the Netherlands, but also in the rest of Europe. For example, the train to Paris uh, stops in Breda, so you can directly uh, go to Paris by train. Breda is a historic, authentic city. It originates from 1251, and it's very vibrant, it's safe, and it's green. If you're from a city like Jakarta, Breda might be very small. It has uh, around 184,000 inhabitants, of which around 20,000 students. Um, but I would say that everything that you need is there. So there is a train station, there is like the necessities like a hospital and those kind of things, but also a lot of bars, restaurants, student activities. And because of the size, uh, it is very easy to uh, go from one place to the other, even in the evening. Our campus is, um, uh, every, all our buildings are now combined in one campus. We used to be spread out in the city, but since 2018, we are now all together in one campus. And it's a very inspiring, high quality and park-like environment with a lot of green. So apart from the uh, buildings where we teach, there's also places to uh, study either by yourself or uh, together with your students and project groups. There's places to relax, to eat, uh, to do some exercise. So it's a very nice place to be. We do have scholarships um, for, uh, in the video, it was already mentioned the Orange Tulip Scholarship for bachelors. We also have the Bewas Bachelor Scholarship and the Holland Scholarship. But since we are today talking about masters, I put these ones in the screen. So there is a Stunet also via NASA Indonesia, and then uh, we are part of LPBP. Housing in Breda, um, you might have heard that housing uh, is getting quite scarce in the Netherlands, uh, and that is the same for Breda, that is the same for every city in the Netherlands, so there is high demand for rooms. This means it's not impossible to find a room, but I would recommend to start looking early. Uh, the price for a room is on average 400 euro per month for a student room where you share the kitchen and the bathroom. Uh, should you wish your own apartment or studio apartment, those start from around 550. Uh, click for cameras, that's the Dutch um, sentence for click for rooms, that is uh, one of the websites where you can find a room, but do not worry, uh, we have 65 rooms available for non-European students and we will also provide you with a housing manual with a number of links of housing uh, associations that we work with. Also, a lot of students do find their room via uh, Facebook, and this is uh, one of the groups, uh, Zoekkamer in Breda, it means uh, searching a room in Breda. It's one of the groups um, that is recommended uh, to look at. 
after this uh, presentation, if you would like to get any more information, uh, there is various ways to um, to get more information or to get in touch with us. For example, you can do a fun quiz, you can do a virtual campus tour. Uh, we have several um, online open days per year. We call them digital discovery days. We have programs per webinar, uh, including for tourism destination management. You can chat with our students via Unibody. We are on YouTube and also on social media. So please check it out uh, via this link and I will write the link down also in the chat box. So now I will uh, give the word to uh, Ineke and uh, Lisa to introduce further tourism destination management. Okay, thank you, Madelon. I will uh, take over. Let me short, uh, firstly, short introduce myself. My name is Ineke and I work as an operational manager for this program, which means that I'm responsible for well, amongst other things, the application process, uh, informing new students about the program. I do all the first intake interviews uh, and I'm involved during the entire year, um, during phase one, when you will be in Breda studying, uh, organizing things for phase two and uh, well, during your thesis, but I'll talk about that later on. Uh, you mainly have to do it yourself. I would like to share some more information about this program in general. And we are very pleased that uh, our alumnus, uh, Luki, is here. Um, she did our program a few years ago. And uh, she will tell her story and her experiences. So um, let me first ask Luki, can you shortly introduce yourself to the audience? Okay, thank you, Ineke. So, hi everyone. My name is Luki Hetera Sani. Actually, you can call me Sani. That that's my nickname. Uh, I graduated from MTDM in 2019. I got a scholarship from Stunet and Fitneso in 2018. Now, currently, I'm working in Ministry of uh, Tourism and Creative Economy as a head of subsection of. Uh, Staffing Law and Organization in the Secretary Deputy of Destination uh, Development and Infrastructure. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, what is the master program about? It's, um, it's a one-year master program. So it's starting in the last week of August with some introduction days. And then uh, we start with a phase one. That's how we call it. We cut the program into three phases. So phase one is the theoretical part where you learn about the development of destinations. So it can be about marketing. It can be destination management, project management. Uh, I will share the, the contact uh, or the details about uh, the curriculum uh, in a few slides with you. Um, the first phase starts in September and runs until the last week of January. Uh, then we continue in phase two, which is a special uh, phase for this program. It's three months doing field research at three different destinations somewhere on the globe. Uh, that can differ every year, also due to uh, circumstances uh, we every year uh, in autumn, decide what the destinations of next academic year will be. And after that, when you return by the start of May, we start with phase three, which is the dissertation phase. It's an individual part of the program where you need to write your thesis. <clears throat> and if you do well, you can graduate within the summer, so you have the entire year around. Adelon, can you do it to the next slide? Because, okay. yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> Madelon already shared some information about BUAS, uh, the university. The master program uh, is just a small part of the university, um, but we feel really special uh, because we every year create a, a nice community with our master program. Um, like mentioned over here, every year we have 
uh, one or two classes. It depends a little bit due to COVID. This year we had 25 students in class. The years before uh, we had 30 or 40 students. At this moment, we already accepted 25 students. So um, we expect to have a, quite a big classroom next year again. The special thing is that uh, the international uh, students within TDM, um, well, we have many of them. Uh, so this year we have 50% international students and 50% Dutch, but usually uh, we have more international students. So the diversity in class is really big because um, not only the uh, international differences, but also the differences in educational background, in age, in, well, in almost everything. Uh, but we will talk about that uh, in a few minutes as well. Also the staff, we have quite a lot of uh, people from abroad, from uh, Turkey, from Palestine, from Brazil, uh, from the UK, from Ireland. So we have many uh, people bringing in their expertise and also with guest lectures, we have a lot of international uh, guests. Okay, uh, next one, please. Um, is the master TDM preparing you for a changing world? Yes, it is. Uh, and especially also before COVID, we, we adapted the program every year because the development is an ongoing process. Uh, but especially due to COVID, uh, there has been a lot of changes in tourism, like you all know. Uh, so this is uh, also within the program, we adapted all courses and give examples on what is the influence for the future of our, uh, of our program. Is it only about uh, tourism? Uh, Madelon, thank you. Um, no, it's not. It's about destination management and tourism. The focus of our master program is on tourism. But of course, if you look at destination management, there's a lot uh, of other things to discuss. Um, so yes, a background in tourism is uh, very useful, but no, it's not necessary because we also look at financial situations, communicative situations, marketing situations. Um, so maybe, Luki, can you tell us something about how did you experience, is, is it, in your opinion, really necessary to have a tourism background to do this program? Uh, yes, Ineka, okay. MTDM itself, uh, I think that MTDM is the representation of the tourism complexity. As we know that tourism is a kind of a ecosystem, one ecosystem that consists of uh, lots of people that has a different background, different interests as well. And also it consists of uh, many areas, facilities, and also how we can manage the destination. So it is uh, really, uh, I think that it's not only a tourism background that needed in this MTDM because of the nature of the tourism itself. So if you don't have any background of tourism, don't worry, you can, uh, as long as you have a passion to develop the tourism destination, you can just join in MTDM. So the the challenge of this MTDM is how we can really manage the tourism destination to be more resilient and also more sustainable. That's all, Inaka. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so it's not only about tourism, but it's about your future. That's what a lot of alumni give us back after they graduated. Like it's a life changing experience the master and especially phase two but i'll get back to that as well um, we try to uh, encourage students to think critically so where in the bachelor program you might receive a question from a lecturer and you can click the box to give an answer or get an assignment which is really clear what you need to do within the master program the assignment is not always clear 
So sometimes you need to create your own assignment or you need to come up with questions yourself or you need to do research uh, and compare research and find your own way and conclusion in a, on a really uh, academic level. Um, so we try to uh, get you out of your comfort zone, uh, try to challenge you to do something you have never done before. We do that during phase one, but we also try to do that during phase two, when we take you to three different destinations. And we will guide you at the start of a destination, but we will leave you by yourself with your group um, to do your research over there, find your own research um, and being self-supportive in, uh, in finding your assignment, but also in finding your way to, to work together with the group. Um, <clears throat> Luki, um, what is your opinion? Did, did they get you out of your uh, comfort zone during the program? Uh, yes, really. I, I really agree with, uh, with you that MTDM is a life-changing experience. I do really agree with that because uh, at first I have to left my comfort zone. Since I arrived in Netherlands, I already left my comfort zone. It's, uh, I have to adapt from the weather, from the food, the people, the cross-cultural people. Uh, and also in my class, uh, there, were, there were 40 students from like 16 uh, nationality. So I have to I have to be able to really collaborate uh, with them. That's that's why we really need to left our comfort zone. And also we encourage to uh, think critically. It always started with the question, why? Why you do that? Why, why, why you are not do that? So everything has a reason that we 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 uh, we can explain. So it's really good. The, the critical thinking uh, really good for us to, to be able to do the research. It's very, very useful for us to do the, the research in the, uh, our thesis, thesis space. So uh, there, there is uh, old quotes from, from, from Dutch language. Leiden is Leiden. It means in Bahasa Indonesia, menjadi pemimpin itu menderita. We have to be really there to left our comfort zone, to, to sacrifice our comfort, to be able to, uh, to be a great, uh, better people. So yeah, I really, uh, really uh, life-changing experience in NTDM. It's unforgettable. Okay, well, thank you. And I was so happy to see you again and do this together. So. Uh... It's really nice to stay in contact with our alumni and especially in this way, it's, uh, it's really nice. Okay, let's continue uh, with uh, me sharing some information about uh, phase one. Uh, like I told you, it's the period, the theoretical part of the program starting in September until the end of uh, January. Um, the order of the program might change a little bit uh, every year, but uh, in general, uh, we have some courses which are six weeks in a row, um, like the contemporary marketing or the destination stakeholder policy, it's six weeks in a row. Um, but for example, the team performance and creative leadership um, research courses they all run over the entire period so they start in september and they run over until uh, the end of january team performance and creative leadership is for example a course in which we prepare students to work together uh, in small groups uh, with with this big diversity so how to deal uh, with well first of all how to deal with yourself uh, and with the with the um, with the comfort zone that you that you needed to leave, um, but also uh, how to work with other people and uh, people with different educational backgrounds and people with different uh, uh, nationalities. So uh, <clears throat> we we set up small groups and um, we do this on purpose to constantly change the groups. 
because in phase two, you need to do the group work for three months in a row. And that's quite challenging uh, to work together for such a long period. So in phase one, we already prepare for phase two, also with the context related research, for example, in which we prepare for phase two, but also for phase three, the writing of your thesis, cross-cultural studies is theoretical, but also preparation for the rest of the course. Um, so, uh, Sani, can you tell me what I'm curious to hear which, which courses were most appealing to you or most difficult, maybe? Yeah, uh, there, there was one of my favorite course, it called Beside the uh, FRP, yeah? uh, that was Contemporary Marketing Context and Trends by Chakmat. So there was a session uh, class called Reading Seminar. So we, we need to, we have to review the journal that given by Chakma, and then we should uh, make a critical review by ourselves. And then in the class, we also have to be very active to, to uh, review that journal. For me, that's very good for me to learn uh, thing critically because uh, it's very good for, for me to learn, to speak, to speak my, uh, my uh, argument to also answer the question from Chakma. So that was one of my favorite and I got around 8.1 in the mark from then. I'm so happy with that result. So, and the second course was uh, Destination Stakeholders. Uh, I think this course is, a, is the core of this MTDM course. In this course, we, we need to uh, we, we learn about the type of the stakeholders and how we can uh, manage them because every stakeholders type uh, has different different uh, method to to manage. We also had an assignment to make a group report and group presentation. Uh, in every assignment, a group assignment in MTD, and we cannot choose uh, our team member so it's always decided by the teacher but uh, we can uh, we can choose the topic so at that time uh, our group chose the Sarajevo top topic so Sarajevo is a city in the Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, there was a challenge uh, to develop the tourism in Sarajevo because of after the long periods of the internal conflict and also uh, there was a complexity of the government structure there, the high unemployment rate, and also the lack of the facilities. So in a group report, we have to write about the current situation, current policy and the strategy, and what the kind of the key drivers of change, and the perspective of the, of the stakeholders. And also we have to review the, their current strategy and give them the, the advice. So. That's one of my favorite uh, part of this MTDM course. And for me, the, the most uh, difficult one is the research process and methods. Uh, because of uh, in, this, in this course, we learn to, uh, to create the research in a quantitative and also the qualitative. And the assignment uh, should be assigned at the end of the year before the before the new year so i made the report uh, uh, in the middle of my vacancy <laughs> so it's a bit difficult for me but the, the most difficult thing is because of the teacher really pay attention towards the uh, the grammar i i do realize that my grammar is not really good but but luckily the teacher allow us allow me to uh, to revise, revise my my report. So thankfully, I I got seven point nine, almost almost uh, almost not eight. <laughs> okay, that's all in a cup. And uh, I'm still I'm curious. Is is there any? Uh, it's a dangerous question, maybe to ask. But uh, in your current job, is there anything from phase one? that was particularly helpful that you're still using in your current job now? 
Yes, of, of course, uh, especially in the destination stakeholders and also the, uh, the, the area general, the way about how I can think uh, in a critical way. The critical thinking is very useful for me uh, in my jobs. And the other one is about the team performance and also the creative leadership. Uh, and of course, we really uh, have to understand ourselves before we can manage others, we can, before we can manage the destination, we have to be really understand about ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, after phase one, we move to phase two, um, which is the uh, field research uh, project. So we travel to um, three different destinations somewhere on the globe. Uh, to do uh, research. Um, due to COVID, uh, our destinations have changed. So in the past, we always traveled to Australia for the first destination, for an urban destination. Uh, we traveled to an emerging destination or uh, developing uh, destination uh, like Myanmar, uh, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, we've been to Thailand, well, to several uh, places. Um, and the last destination has always been Bali. Well, uh, because there's a lot of uh, things going on there and uh, it's a really developed uh, island and uh, there's a lot to do with tourism, so a lot to do research on. Uh, this year, the students uh, stayed in Europe because we were not uh, allowed to travel outside uh, Europe uh, due to COVID. Next year, we don't know what the destinations will be, but for sure, our uh, intention is to travel and not to do it online uh, like we needed to do last year. Um, so, um, can you put the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, so at a location, uh, you will be split into small groups to do research and you need to look at a possible, probable or preferable uh, situation uh, seen through the eyes of a stakeholder, which can be, for example, a medium sized or large sized uh, tourism organization. It can also be seen through the eyes of a local resident or a small uh, enterprise. So based on the stakeholder, you need to give an advice on the potential development of an area. Um, Luki, maybe can you tell your story about phase two? Where did you go and uh, what was most challenging for you during this period? Okay, uh, well, this phase, was the most weighted uh, time for, for all of us in the class. So uh, we went to Melbourne in Australia in February, and then we moved to Sri Lanka uh, in March, and then moved to Bali in April. So uh, it's like from, from winter time in the Netherlands, then we suddenly moved to the summer time in Melbourne. So at the first time we arrived in Melbourne, we have to adapt again. So like Ineka said that uh, in this phase, in this phase two, we work based on the group project so that we cannot choose. We cannot choose uh, the team. It's always decided by the teacher for the first and the second destination. We have uh, same team, but in the third destination, uh, our team uh, has changed. So uh, my team was uh, in Melbourne, in Sri Lanka. There were four people, two Dutch girls and one from, from UK. We really have a good time in, in two destination. In Melbourne, we had an assignment to do research in Central Business District. That was my favorite area in Melbourne because of uh, the vibe is very, very uh, lovely. Uh, there were lots of young people, uh, creative people that lived there in, in Melbourne. The challenge, uh, the big challenge for us is 
uh, because of the CBD area was a very huge area and we also had to have to uh, do some research in MLO or the medium size and large tourism organizations. It's a bit uh, challenging for us because it's a bit uh, difficult to make an appointment for the big company uh, at the first like because our time is very limited around maybe one week effective. So uh, we decided to uh, have interview with the head of business association so we can get a very uh, broad perspective about the CBDs area. And also we do we, we do lots of walking in a, in a, in a CBDs area. So uh, it's very interesting to do some research in Melbourne because of the fast growing area in Melbourne, there were lots of China investors and why the tourism growing in Melbourne because of one, uh, one reason is because of the students, the, the, the college in the Melbourne is getting, getting higher. And then, yeah, uh, we can manage the Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne research. And then we moved to, uh, to Sri Lanka. But uh, before that, uh, in, during this research, uh, I really want to plan myself to the destination so I can so I can felt the destination, the find the people. That's why the insight comes from. Uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, we got the area called Gold Area, Gold the Gold Area. It's an uh, old city that's surrounded by by the sea. Uh, the the challenge there is uh, because of uh, at first uh, at first we, we we are a bit overwhelmed what what we are going to do in in this area it's a bit difficult in this in that area but uh, but luckily we can talk easily with the people because of the characteristic in micro and small size enterprise so uh, we we decided to do some research in the uh, I mean, we define the area for the research. So thankfully, it's also doable. But uh, during before the presentation time, I got the news from my family that my father uh, hospitalized for the serious illness. And then at the time, I was so confused what what I'm going to do. So that I continue the presentation or going back to. Uh, to my hometown in Jakarta, and then the teachers and my team really support me. They really, really support me to, uh, to uh, for me to go back to Indonesia. So the one one very unique from this master is uh, the supportive, the supporting team from the teachers from the from all of the colleagues. That's that's really unforgettable for me. So uh, after that, I continue to uh, take, uh, take care of my father in hometown. And at the same time, the team uh, moving to Bali. I skipped the Bali research because of I had to uh, accompany my mother and family in Jakarta. During that, during Bali, during Bali research, my father passed away. And uh, my supervisor at that time, Hermanian, told me that uh, it's okay for me to take the time to take a break from, from the study. Uh, and then I can go back uh, whenever I'm ready. So uh, after the Bali research finished, uh, Hermanian gave, gave, gave me choice to do my own research. So uh, I chose Borobudur to do my uh, third research by myself. Uh, it's around two weeks. I have finished for around two weeks. And I realized that my time uh, already limited because I my target is actually uh, finished on August. Uh, so that's, I already waste my time around uh, one month, but thankfully I can manage that. Yeah. For the thesis, I will, Tell you later after this. Yeah. Okay. Very long story. <laughs> Very long story. 
<laughs> for sharing your personal story with us. Um, we have a short video about phase two. Um, I think it's nice to have a look. phase two without phase one. It's, it's important because it prepares you, it gives you a theoretical background um, in order to understand what you are doing in phase two, because otherwise uh, we would be very lost, I think. You really learn about the theory, um, the information behind, and phase two, it's especially about practice, and you really start to understand the theory behind now. Um, so it really completes the picture of the master. The second phase was a reason for me to um, start this master. And I'm lying if, if it wouldn't be a reason why I would join, because it's amazing, it's a great experience. If I would have to describe the field trip in three words, um, I would say very cliche, but a life experience. Um, responsibility. Challenging. Enthusiasm. Um, a network all around the world. And it's been a priceless experience. Um, stakeholders have different perspectives and we learned uh, by talking to them um, what their perspective was and their ideas about the future of their destination. And then you start understanding the context of the destination as well and also how it grows and how it develops um, and why some things happen and others don't. Um, and that makes it really, really um, realistic and then you can also give a real realistic advice. I, I like the group work, um, it's, it's not easy always, but you know, in real life uh, you will always get along with your co-workers, so I think uh, the fact that you are uh, pushed to, to work with different people all the time, so trains you for the future. So many things can happen, but it will always teach you something about yourself, more than about anybody else, so it's, it's a good thing that this master is very based on that. We like to stay on the surface of things, but you need to be able, as a contemporary destination manager, you need to be able to understand the importance of difference and the significance of it. Tourism destination management is super complex. It takes some time to understand what's going on in a destination before you can actually say something about it. Okay, thank you, Madelon, for sharing the video with us. Uh, after phase two, you immediately start with phase three, or in fact, we already in September encourage you to start with your thesis, to start writing uh, the first chapters, chapters of your uh, dissertation. Um, but as of May onwards, uh, you can do your, uh, your thesis process anywhere in the world. So you don't need to return to Breda. You can go, for example, to your uh, destination you want to do your research on, but you can also travel home. It's up to you. You can do. You can have your supervisor uh, online. We only expect you to return to Breda for the uh, the exams because we would like to celebrate with you if you manage to uh, to pass the uh, the thesis process. Um, Sani. Um, maybe you can tell something about your uh, thesis process. Yeah, uh, yeah. For my thesis, I already wrote the chapter one until three in October because before that we had to present our initial idea and then got the supervisor. Uh, I got my first preference of supervisor my favorite one <laughs> the my favorite teacher so uh, my thesis is about the uh, marine tourism development uh, how to optimize the benefit for the local community uh, in labuan bajo uh, why i do that because labuan bajo one of uh, our destination priority for the def uh, government development so I really think that uh, is it should uh, really uh, the tourism development in Labuan Bajo could give the good impact for the especially for the local community. So uh, I identify the impact of the 
the tourism, not only in economy, but also uh, uh, the social, 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 cultural, and also environmental uh, impact. So, and I also uh, uh, try to find the gap between the government expectation, also the uh, local communities' expect expectation. Do they really get the benefit of the tourism? And the result uh, was good. They, they, they found the impact of the tourism, but. At the same part, like uh, environmental, there was a uh, kind of not 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 a good result. But I also create recommendation for short, middle, and long term recommendation. In the short recommendation, I made a recommendation to increase the waste management and also the uh, increase the basic facilities. And for the long term recommendation, I made uh, I, I suggest to create a regulation and also the alternative livelihood for the local community because because actually most of the people in Labuan Bajo was uh, uh, was working in the sea area so it's very important to have a alternative livelihood for them and the long-term recommendation uh, my result was to create a sustainable energy and also how to make the destination more uh, more resilient so that was my my result of the thesis and for the oral exam in in August August yeah August I believe uh, was held by two teachers one supervisor one teacher and one from external examiner so in total the the process of my uh, this is in Indonesia was only two months one month for uh, primary data gathering and then one month for the writing finalization and also discussion with my supervisor uh, yeah that's all for the this is thankfully it's very doable because because of we already wrote the wrote the thesis in the first October in the October so it's really help helpful for us yeah okay and you did a good job with your thesis yeah alhamdulillah i got eight from ten <laughs> with a very short period so i really really, really happy with that result so, yeah yeah i can imagine you did you did great indeed okay um, um we also have a phase four which is not in breda at the university but it's after graduating our alumni um, they end up everywhere in the world in totally different jobs. So some go into research, some into public organizations, some in very commercial jobs, uh, tourist agents, um, consultancy. Um, it's very diverse. Uh, Luki, you are still in contact, I believe, with some uh, students from your class. Yes, uh, I still have contact with uh... My friends from Netherlands, like Remy, Esme, and from China. Yeah. Okay. Nicole, uh, all the time I made a call with them and or a WhatsApp call. Uh, some of them working in in a bank as a financial advisor, and some of them work in a resort hotel and also have their own business or working in the. Uh, like even organizer, and also there 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 are someone that work in tourism consultant. Yeah, yeah. so many so various so various various. various. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. And um, well, it's it's nice that we have a LinkedIn very active LinkedIn group uh, for our alumni where we share information still content wise um, about the program, but also job op openings uh, we share on. Uh, on this LinkedIn page. So it's nice to um, keep in contact with our alumni. <clears throat> so uh, I just want to give a short wrap up. Uh, why, uh, if you are interested, why should you choose for this program? Uh, what makes it special? So I think, um, well, the three month destination management field trip is, is a really special part of this program. Um, the international classroom, we really have many uh, international students every year in class. Um, 
Sani already mentioned the personal contact um, we have with our students and the students amongst each other. So we really see every year uh, a nice community created. We already start during the application process somewhere in May, June to create a WhatsApp group with all new uh, students. So they can meet up during the summer already before you get started. Um, well, the three phases, three different destinations. Uh, I think that's uh, that's the main reason why uh, this program is maybe different uh, than other programs. If you want to apply for uh, this master program, you can do so by following the steps mentioned on our website, uh, buels.nl. Um, you first register in StudyLink. Uh, and then you just follow the steps in your online application portal. Um, this year it's new that uh, next to your resume and the motivation letter, you have to uh, give us two references. One should be an academic one and one can be a professional one as well. And then uh, I invite you for an intake interview uh, to discuss your interest in this master program. and. Uh, and go through your uh, documents. Um, well, once uh, we have the conclusion that you are a good fit for the program and you still like to attend the program, then uh, we finish up and then uh, you can uh, get an admission letter from us. Um, the deadline for non-European students is the 1st of June every year. Uh, this has to do with the visa procedure, and therefore, uh, this is a little bit before the deadline for the European students. Um, the program got funded by the Dutch government for the European students. For non-Europeans, it's 11,500 euros. And that's for the entire program, excluding the phase two trip. So you need to pay for your uh, tickets yourself. We always arrange group tickets for the entire class. Uh, if we travel to Southeast Asia again, this year when we stayed in Europe, students could arrange their trips themselves. So it will depend on what uh, the destinations will be next year. Um, now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Lisa. She prepared a nice quiz for you. Yes, all right. Hi, everyone. I hope you had a very informative almost an hour. Um, so we're going to do something fun now. Um, we will use the chat. I will say a couple of statements and you can indicate in the chat if these are true or false. Um, so please open up the chat and be ready to answer the first question. Um, so is it true or false that you can decide yourself with who and to which destination you go to in phase two. Is this true or is this false? See one saying no. More people who think this is true or false. One more false. Okay, I see a lot of people giving the right answer. That, that's good. Um, so it is false. You cannot decide to which destination you go to yourself. And well, you're going with your class, so everyone is going to the same destination. So I think that's like a nice aspect. However, like Inigo already mentioned, you can find your own accommodation um, on the destinations. So there you can decide yourself uh, where you want to live and with who you want to live. All right, if we go to the next slide, we have the next statement. Um, so again, is it true or false that um, you can have a side job next to your studies? Is it true or is it false? I'd love to hear from you. See one answer. More people who think it's true or false. See another false. Yes, so of course you can. We cannot prohibit you from taking a side job. However, we really do not recommend you taking a side job during your studies as it is really a 40 hour per week studies. Um, the five months you're in Breda, um, you have a lot of theory to learn, uh, a lot of knowledge to gain. Um, and of course, next to your projects and everything, uh, there is also the fun student life. Uh, Breda is a really nice city, uh, a lot of things to do, going out, um, but also seeing the Netherlands, of course. 
Um, so having a side job next to your studies uh, would be very difficult and really do not recommend um, to have a side job. Um, if we go to the next statement, um, is this true or false? You will learn a lot about cross-cultural communication. Is this true or is this false? Please let me know in the comments. Yeah, so I see a lot of people answering true. Um, it is true, uh, you will be in a very international classroom. Uh, like Inka already mentioned, we have, I think, 13 nationalities this year, um, but I think next year will be even more. Um, Luki, do you maybe have a fun example of like cross-cultural communication? How was that in your experience? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, 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 uh, the, the, our ability to talk with other uh, people from nationality uh, can be tested in uh, while we are in a group meeting. So uh, it's very different because the people from Asia and also from Europe, Europe itself has a different uh, different culture like a like a Dutch, almost similar with uh, Germany, but it's also different from uh, Moldova and different with the uh, Bulgari, uh, and also from Russia, also different. I have a best friend from Poland. She also has a different characteristic that uh, at the end, I'm trying to understand them. So, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine it. I think that yeah, yeah. redirect. Yeah, like uh, that's very direct, but for Asian people, uh, we cannot talk in a very direct manner. So, but that's no problem for me because yeah, that's life. That's that's the people from around the world. I'm really happy with the cross cultural uh, people in my class. That was super uh, challenging time, but also fun time. Yeah, that's very good to hear. Thank you so much. Um, if we go to the next one. Um, this one says you have plenty of options to explore the Netherlands in phase one. Is this true or is this false? We'd love to hear from you again. It's true. It's kind of true. It's kind of false. Uh, it really depends on your own planning and what you want to see. Um, I know that this year we had a girl from Hungary and I think that she saw more of the Netherlands than I did in my whole life. <laughs> I think she had a trip planned every weekend. Um, so she saw a lot of the Netherlands. Um, but of course, you have to study as well. Um, so you have to find that combination. But it's definitely possible to see uh, the Netherlands, of course, during the first uh, five months in Breda. And then we go, I think, to the last statement. Yes, uh, the last statement is the introduction days are very boring. Is this true or is this false? I see looking already smiling. <laughs> a good sign. <laughs> well, this is of course false. Uh, if we go to the next slide, you can see some very fun pictures of um, the last introduction week. Um, we organize this ourselves and uh, we always have a lot of fun. Um, it's a good mix between getting to know everyone, um, having a little party, um, doing some fun activities, having good dinners together. Um, and also getting to know the university and the people who work here. Um, so as you can see, we had a lot of fun last year and I hope this year is gonna be as fun as last year. So these, this was the quiz. So I think we can wrap up the presentation now. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, we will start a Q&A in just a bit, but I would like to say a little bit more about the options, how you can uh, contact us if you still have any questions afterwards. Um, you can find us on Instagram. We have the Buos Tourism Instagram, where you can find a highlight with a lot of information about TDM as well. Uh, but we also have the Buos University-wide um, Instagram, uh, where you can also find a lot of information about the university itself. If you have any questions, you can always send us an email to mastertdm at um, or you can go on the Buos website and start a chat with me. Uh, you'll see my face pop up somewhere and uh, you can start to chat with me. And of course, you can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. So I think that was our presentation. Um, should I give back the, the presentation to um, the people from NASO? Thank you so much. Thank you. Um,
from all of the information that you give from Madeline, from Inaka, Lisa, and Juga Baluki. Thank you so much. This is really, really good and very, very comprehensive information that um, the viewers uh, can be seen as well because you got the information from the university and also from the alumni as well. Okay. I think a lot of uh, viewers here or the participants that you would like to ask questions. It's simply, uh, you can drop the question to the chat box, okay? Or this is gonna be really special or you can have a talk uh, live with um, all the representative from uh, Breda University of Applied Sciences or even uh, to our alumni, Luki. So please, if you have questions, if you would like to raise your hand, feel free because we do still have time around 14 minutes from now. Uh, once again, we invite you all. Jadi kalau yang pengen punya pertanyaan, sangat dipersilakan sekali. If you feel like you don't have any ability to speak in English, that's okay. I can translate to you. So the question is going to be delivered in English. Okay. So to all the participants, uh, please do. And then while we are waiting, I think I'm going to um, ask the questions maybe to Madeline or Inek or Lisa or maybe to Maluki. So this uh, study program, it's all about a destination management, right? So uh, I would like to know why is this, uh, why is destination management is really important in tourism? Hey, Luki, can you give your opinion? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, it is very important to manage the destination because if we can manage very well the destination, the destination could give the very optimal impact for the community. So that's uh, the most important thing is how uh, the destination can give the impact for economy, social, cultural, and also environmental. So it's really need to be very well managed and well, well planned, well prepared with a good strategy. I see, yes, that's correct. Because somehow uh, the destination, if it's not really managed uh, very well, again, it's related to the environment, right? We don't want to ruin the environment of the place that belongs to the uh, let's say to the uh, what is it like to the um, to the society so that's the, the very um, very important uh, message so thank you so much uh, Maluki for the answer okay so anything the questions that related with the study program or even with the Breda University of Applied Sciences are welcome so please if you would like to uh, drop your question to the chat box we have Madeline here and also if you would like to do a live and then have the conversation with all the speakers, uh, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, and then, oh, there you go. I think Bruce, you have questions um, for Luki? Hi, Luki, yeah, you mentioned in your talk, which I, I, I really, really enjoyed, um, you said before we can manage destinations, we always have to understand ourselves. I'd like to hear more about that because I think that's very interesting. And I think the, 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 the Masters is dynamic and covers and um, incorporates questions like this. But I'd like to hear what you meant about that. Yeah. Uh, so that's the important part of how we can, why we, we should uh, understand ourselves. It's like uh, we, we know what, uh, what we are best at or what we are what our strength weakness opportunity and also yeah how we can manage ourselves during the uh, with the, with our emotion how we can manage ourselves that's why we can handle uh, we can we can communicate with the people uh, with uh, very good that's that's a thing yeah yeah something something okay. like that how really we how how we really understand our uh, potential our potential yeah so do you mean as a as, as a local destination or for for people locally or for tourists coming in i mean because obviously with tourism it's um locals revisiting that's a big part of the success of uh, tourism locals revisiting local sites and also foreign tourists coming in. So I was just curious about um, 
um, that question about whether how we understand ourselves, because it's it's uh, it's quite complicated, I, I guess. Yeah, uh, in the, in the marketing, we can see the behavior of the tourists by the data. So that's why we can uh, create a, a proper strategy for the for the different kind of tourists, different kind of uh, their nationality. That's why we we have to be really understand what kind of the market that we want to. Uh, uh, I mean, the target market that we want. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe I can uh, add those, like. Um, yeah, there you go. Hi, hello. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, you too. Yeah, I think it's it's also the fact that, uh, if, for example, in phase two, if we travel to uh, Australia, eh? if we travel yeah. to Melbourne, that's a totally different environment than when you travel to Sri Lanka. So you see, like some students they uh, do really well doing research in a city like Melbourne, but then they move yeah. to Sri Lanka and they are in an urban, uh, at the, uh, in an uh, urban, sorry, not urban, uh, <clears throat> local uh, destination where there's maybe economic problems or political problems and they don't know how to act or the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can look at yourself very critically, uh, it will help you in, in um, yeah, doing research at a destination, but also looking at the perspective of a stakeholder. It can be very different. Also, uh, yeah, looking from your own perspective to a situation or a possible uh, development. So I think that's also something. Yeah, if you don't know yourself, you don't know yeah. how to uh, give an advice to somebody else because you all look from through different glasses to the situation, I think. I think. And that's that's also why I like Brady University, obviously, <laughs> is um, the the emphasis on on self reflection and mm -hmm. critical thinking, because everything changes all the time. You know, it always will. Yep. But I like the fact now education and this particular masters. It's, it's about self-reflection and critical thinking, as has been mentioned before, because things will change, you know, and um, and cultures change, you know, but I, so I, that's why I'm also a big fan of this uh, master's program. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, I think uh, indeed the, the, the changes is something we take along and we also get from our students. So every year we get new insights for our own program but also connecting the, the, the students together is, is really yeah, an amazing thing for our program and which is uh, yeah, helping support uh, students as well in, in their own personal development, I think. And we jointly learn with so many international students, we jointly learn in a dynamic way. Yeah, true, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you, Bruce. Um, uh, this is a really, really good discussion, but we have to move on. Um, so Madeline, um, I think you already answered uh, the question regarding about the scholarship, but I would like to ask you a, a little bit a uh, question about the scholarship because you already passed the deadline for the Orange Loop Scholarship. And also I know that you, uh, sorry, Breda also have, um, what is it, a Holland Scholarship, but the thing is, uh, what is the Sony scholarship, um, if I don't mind to ask you, and then if you know information about the Sony uh, scholarship? Yes, yeah, so I just go used Google Translate to uh, translate the question, and then I understood it was about scholarships. Yeah. Uh, well, the ones you mentioned are only for bachelors. So if we talk specifically about uh, tourism destination management or masters in general, we have uh, Stunet and uh, also LPDP. I understood uh, Luki uh, received the student scholarship, so maybe you can share some experience about that. Uh, the Sony scholarship is a, a brand new scholarship, but that is specifically for our gaming program. So I that see. is not applicable for, uh, oh, for the tourism. Okay, that's fine. But uh, yeah. I mean, um, yes, this is a really good opportunity if you guys uh, have any interest with the gaming program. So I think Sony uh, scholarship. So this is Sony with the brand of uh, the Sony, right? 
Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Amazing. That's yeah. really perfect then. <laughs> oh, and you're really okay. up to date because this has been put on our website really very recently. <laughs> right, correct. <laughs> okay, so I think another question for you, uh, Madeline. So I think this is the question from Marcella Maretti. Um, so uh, she asked regarding the subject related to tourism resilience because now we've been on the pandemic for these two years. So is there any... Uh, you know, like study program or even like subject that related with tourism resilience? For this, I would like to give the word to uh, Inika. I think Inika. she can answer this better. Okay, yeah. so Inika, offer to you. Yes, uh, thank you, Marcella, for your question. Um, indeed, we, uh, yeah, we constantly adapt the program to the current situation. So, of course, uh, <clears throat> the courses in phase one uh, have been adapted due to the corona situation. Um, so we give, uh, yeah, we, we try to, uh, <clears throat> to, to use examples from the situation in, well, almost every course. And of course, phase two, uh, which is the traveling part, has also been affected by the pandemic. And we see in phase three, which is the thesis writing, that we have students uh, choosing topics uh, related to the impact of uh, of COVID uh, very often, so it's not uh, obliged, of course, but it's uh, yeah really up to date. So uh, people use this topic uh, frequently. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Inako, uh, with the. Uh... Uh, what is it with the explanation regarding about the study program as well? Yes, this is really interesting because you have phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. So um, I think students can uh, do really understand and then try to explore more and more uh, in depth uh, regarding about the study program. So this is really, really good uh, study program if you guys have the, an interest with the tourism destination management. Okay, I think our time is up. Okay, now we are in 5 of 17 uh, PM in Indonesia. So once again, thank you so much to all the speakers here. Thank you uh, for joining us with the very special um, online learning or online series that we have. It's all about study master tourism destination management in the Netherlands. So once again, thank you for Ineke, Lisa, and also Madeline and also Baluki. Thank you so much. And then we hope that we can see each other in person, hopefully in the upcoming uh, years, because again, now we have a little bit restriction, uh, sorry, a little bit relaxation with travel. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank so you. once again, yeah. yes, uh, if, um, and also Bruce, thank you, uh, join us uh, from Brisbane, Australia. So I hope thank you, uh, very much. you have a very lovely, um, we can because we can be there and then if you guys have any question and you have uh, if you have missed uh, the first part of the online series i think madeline you can drop uh, all the contact details if you want to drop like emails or any social media platform to the chat box so i think all the viewers or participants can um what is it like can answer uh, the questions uh, straight away to you okay Terima kasih sekali lagi buat teman-teman yang sudah hadir di sini. So thank you for participating and also join us uh, with today. And we hope you had a great session. And again, because uh, I think now it's time, uh, it's really close to uh, breakfasting. Uh, so once again, selamat menemukan ibadah puasa dan juga selamat uh, apa namanya menjelang berbuka puasa. And then uh, I think this is the last um, episode before we go to Eid Mubarak. So I think this is the perfect time. If there is something wrong, mohon maaf lahir dan batin. Mudah-mudahan kita bisa ketemu lagi dan kesempatan. And then, um, yeah, next time uh, we are going to have another session uh, in the next month on May. So my name is Molly. I'm signing off. Thanks again. And then I'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye, Molly. -bye. <laughs>